What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV back here for yet another Tottenham update and if you don't know by now head over to wearetottenhamtv.com for your latest articles and also Spotify and various other podcasting platforms for the audio version of our videos as well. But let's get straight into the update and what a better place to start than Tottenham low knee Eric Dyer and obviously Harry Kane knocking Arsenal out the Champions League last night. Um, Eric Dyer rolling back Back the years with an unbelievable performance and uh, yeah I thought Bayern were well worth the, the um, to qualify for the next round for the semi-final over the two legs. Yeah incredible uh, both legs for Bayern Munich obviously Arsenal were favourites going into it but they just couldn't overcome that experience that Bayern Munich showed um, on, in both legs and I think Thomas Tuchel really did a job on Mikel Arteta but yeah, massive credit to Eric Dyer who I thought over both legs was pretty astonishing the level of performance he put off and really maybe quietened down a few people who were saying why is he starting over the likes of Kim Min Jae and even Upamakano as well was on the bench he put in incredible display keeping Arsenal out um, maybe Spurs will consider recalling him from his loan <laughs> I don't know I don't know if that's possible so I think technically he's still on loan so I, I don't know he's doing um, a good job where he is and yeah Harry uh, leading them but obviously um it was, a, it was a great night uh, watching it and watching Arsenal uh, fall to yet again in April. But obviously it, does, it did affect our coefficient um, spot. If we're looking for that fifth place to be um, a Champions League spot with Man City going out as well. Obviously Arsenal being dumped out. Germany now heavy, heavy favourites to get that uh, fifth place coefficient. Before the round of um, quarterfinals, I think the percentage chance of the fifth place being a UCL spot was about 70% and now it's down to 5% needing a miracle from Liverpool and West Ham probably um, for that fifth place. So I, I think it's going to be fourth or bust now for Spurs. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I've always <coughs> preferred the Europa League theme tune. Anyway, whoa, 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 whoa. It's a banger. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Come on, bring it on. But look, <laughs> We can get full. We're still three points behind with the game in hand. I think everyone else, it was weird, uh, not weird, but it was funny on social media. Everyone uh, like saying, oh, I always prefer the Europa League anyway after last night, which I get, it's funny. But look, we still got a chance at Champions League, but I'm still holding out hope. Uh, I'm not so sure, to be honest. We I mean, could finish top with, four. Why with, not? Uh, fixtures that we've got left. How many points do you reckon we need to get top four? I reckon we need, I, I reckon we need 12. 12. Where are those 12 coming from? Six, six from uh, Sheffield Burn, Burnley. And so we need six from the other four games, which is City, Chelsea away. Chelsea away. A corner, Arsenal at home. City at home. City and Liverpool, at home away. Liverpool away. <laughs> Have to beat Arsenal and City at home. That's our only hope. Why not? We can do it. We've got good home form. We've got a good record against the big we teams. We could beat Arsenal the way they're bottling at the moment. But ugh, we know. always beat City at home. Always. Yeah. Except for in the cup this Forget year. Forget the cup. I'm saying in the league. <laughs> in the league, we always beat City at home. Champions League as well. We beat them at home. Yeah, but what if um, it comes down to its second last game of the season? We need City to win to win the league ahead of us. It'll Arsenal. be done by then. I the league, so. League's going to be wrapped up, so well, they're going to be the on the couple of weeks. City are going to be on the beach by the time they come to us. Don't I you worry so. about that. I hope so, but if it does come to that situation, what? So that, um, we obviously, if it well, does come back to that situation, I know you're going to be walking into that Tottenham Hotspur Stadium going, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we'll see. Whoa, 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 I'm whoa, just saying, whoa. Look, Villa also have very tough games, and I think if we can get the points required, look, I, I don't think they're nailed on for um, you know to go on a great. I know they beat Arsenal, and maybe maybe that will turn their momentum around. But I'm looking at them and thinking they're they're still going to drop a lot of points. The league table, as it stands, is with three points behind, with a game in hand as well. So we'll just take it game by game. I I think it's very open. I don't think it's a full conclusion whatsoever, and I think twelve points is not impossible for us two wins out of those four games that means we can lose two games and still you know get we have fun points from there so i think it's still there for us if we can go on a good run and we've we've played we have played better against the better teams it's this true. season it's so true. why yeah, not it does suit our game a bit more with that space in behind but i guess the takeaway from this point is that kane and eric dyer have put arsenal well and truly in the mud and um look there needs to be a conversation to be had about arsenal's european pedigree only twice in their history making the semi finals of the Champions League and last night showing that once again uh, but April Arteta April Arteta again mm -hmm. uh, three years in a row now uh, absolutely bottling April you know they hit the top of the league lose to Aston Villa last year we all know what happened to them in the year before I think they lost about three or four games in April as well in the fight for the top four so Arsenal fans 
in the mud. But let's move on to some transfer news. Sebastian Szymanski of Fenerbahce Axam saying that Fenerbahce expect to lose Szymanski this summer with Tottenham favourites to sign him. Fenerbahce want 25 million euros for the midfielder and Heredi uh, identified his replacement. Another number 10 Spurs being linked to. I wonder if these injuries from Madison have made Spurs think can we not can we rely on him but like do we need another player there just because you know he has he has history of injuries he obviously missed three months with a bad ankle injury and also not only has he missed three months but every game he seems to like Oh, especially right. at the start of the season, like he was always a doubt for every game and he ended up making it. But it's not just that. He always goes off around the 70, 75th minute mark as well. He never lasts 90 minutes. So maybe not not that we're thinking of replacing him or anything. Maybe we're thinking he has got injuries. We might need another option there just, just so uh, we can cover that position. Well, I think it's clear for everyone to see that Giovanni Lo Celso is going anyway. So it's just to replace him, I guess. And also we need that as well. So maybe no surprise. Obviously, he's having a good season um, out in Turkey. He had a great season last year in in. Um, under Arnie Slot as well for Feyenoord scoring quite a few goals so it's interesting I mean I wouldn't earmark him as like someone who I think would massively uh, improve us but he does seem like a good player maybe we see some uh, value in him yeah I mean if I'm looking at him and compared to maybe some of the other players that we've been linked with I think I'd probably prefer someone like an Albert Goodmanson who's done it like in a better league and I think he's been brilliant this season Goodmanson I've looked even closer into him and he's probably a bit more versatile than, than Szymanski as well mm, I agree with that um, let's talk about Sergio Regulon now as Jay Harris, Brentford correspondent for The Athletic, says that Regulon is unlikely to join Brent Brentford on a permanent basis this summer, mm. which is quite surprising to me because I think he's been pretty good uh, for Brentford. I thought he was OK for Manchester United as well um, in the first part of the season. But if he doesn't join Brentford, do you think that Ange, I mean, Ange hasn't seemed to fancy him yet, but do you think he can look at him as maybe a backup to Destiny Doggy? Maybe it's worth having a second look um, in the pre-season, but I think with the foreign player quota problem mm -hmm. we have, I think that's what really has screwed him. I think if we didn't have that problem in the summer, he probably would have stayed, I think, as backup, but then we, it turned out we needed to ship out um, uh, um, foreign players. He was one who was kind of surplus to requirements. I don't think Andrew was convinced by him anyway. So then we, we ended up um, getting rid of him. Obviously, we actually ended up getting rid of him for no fee to Man United. That's how desperate we were. So I envisage we'll probably want to get rid of him anyway because um, of that. But I am surprised that Brentford haven't um not, aren't going to take up any option maybe they're priced out maybe they're thinking he's going to be too expensive um obviously he's probably on quite hefty wages compared to the rest of his teammates because tottenham obviously offer quite big wages compared to brentford so maybe that's something that they're thinking is too much maybe it's a case of he'll go back on loan next season and to brentford for the whole season with an option to buy potentially maybe that's the way we'll look at it but i isn't am surprised he, isn't he going into his final year now though um, next season. Yeah, so I'm not Joe sure. Regulon. I'm not sure. So if he is doing that, then he'll go on loan and then just go on out free at the end of the season. Yeah, but that's something that other that players have seemed to be doing recently, isn't it? Uh, Rayo did it. Dyer has gone on loan um, with a view to, with just moving. So maybe that's I don't know. Maybe that's how we'll move forward. His contract actually expires. Oh no, that's his loan contract. Yeah, 2025. So at so, the end of next season. Well, I think we. And from that case, we should offer them a good deal, but maybe they're not convinced. But I think he's been pretty good. I, I think he's pretty much played whenever he's been fit. Um, he's pretty um, effective. Those assists as well. He's got three assists, I think. Um, so I'm, I'm perplexed why they're not convinced by him, but that's up to Thomas Frank, I guess. I guess also they've got uh, Rico Henry uh, coming mm, back to fitness that's next a good season point. as well. That's a good point. So why sp spend money on Regulon? But competition, you would think, um, that would help. But maybe it's a money thing. Mm. Well, we'll have to see how that one pans out, but let's move on to the last bit of transfer speculation that we've got for you today, and that goes by the name of Jared Bradthwaite of Everton as Team Cork say that Bayern Munich and Tottenham have joined Manchester United in considering a move for Everton's Jared Bradthwaite. Apparently, the price band and about for him is about £70 million, pounds, crazy. which is crazy money. I mean, I'm a big believer in Jared Bradthwaite. I've been so impressed with what I've seen from him this season. Um, but £70 million for what you've got to say is probably going to be a squad player. He's not going to displace Mickey van der Ven, I don't think, from the starting lineup next season. But he provides unbelievable cover. £70 million is just a bit way too steep. It's not. That's crazy money. Obviously, we we wouldn't even pay what for was it last year? Fifty million for taps over. So I don't. I don't know if we'll. I don't know if we'll spend seventy for uh, um, Bramford. Considering as well, we got Mickey Van der Ven for forty million. So we'll look at that and thinking, why would we go and spend that amount of money? Bramford recently 
hasn't been as good to be honest I, I mean may i think maybe i'm judging him harshly because i was watching him in the chelsea game and i think he had a bit of an injury and he went off at half time but yeah. in that first half he was dreadful he got absolutely roasted by palmer nutmegged and then um got completely done and um i thought for a few of the goals i thought jackson was giving him a tough tough time but again maybe i'm being harsh because he had a bit of an injury but i also feel like recently he's has dropped off um a form a bit um but that is maybe recency bias. Obviously, he's had a brilliant year for Everton. First year starting week in, week out. He's such a young centre-back as well. Um, he seems to be very accomplished on the ball, very confident for such a young player. And he's in a difficult circumstance with Everton battling near the bottom of the table. And he's had to really step up for them. And he's done a great job. So I'm not doubting his quality, but I think 70 million is way too steep. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then let's finish off talking about the leaked kit once again. A couple of days ago, we brought you the leaked kit for the home shirt. And it looks as though... Um, the same website has published what it's actually going to be the first team shirt next season it's the one that we brought you just with a uh, blue sleeve so if we bring that up um and i quite like it mm. i really do and daigle was on um the fan show yesterday talking about why don't nike do anything different why is it always a plain white shirt well there you go daigle you got a bit of um <laughs> uh, you got a bit of something new on the shirt that Nike are bringing in this year, which is very similar, isn't it, to the 0506? I mean, it seems like a carbon copy, to be honest. When you're looking at the 0506 shirt, obviously that was under Martin Yo, uh, Lasagna Gate season, and what was a really good season for Spurs, mm. apart from the last game um against west ham and i've always liked this shirt it's always been one of my favorite shirts i think i had that back in the day with defoe on the back i think mm -hmm. um and it does seem like literally a carbon copy doesn't it yeah literally the same maybe it's a sign of uh a new era starting a bit like under martin yell yeah. maybe i don't know I, I don't know if they go that back that far i think any fans probably look at things like that just get rid of the red why do we have to have a red aia it's been years come on i think spurs should realize we shouldn't have red on our kit anymore but it's a nice kit i like the like the blue sleeves um yeah it's reminiscent of good times yeah let's just hope they don't um if we, if we do have this shirt next season lasagna better be off the menu for the whole year because <laughs> i don't want to see them uh, having lasagna next season like just get that off the menu 100 uh but look that is your tottenham update for today let me know in the comment section below your thoughts regarding the leaked shirt for next season and let me know about the transfer speculation as well what is your opinions on those matters but thank you everyone for joining us today like subscribe and comment and as always come on you spurs, spurs.